get mantra and meditation mp3s at jasongalant.ca. One thing that I've noticed happens for a lot of students and, and people in general in life, and I don't know whether it's because of this is the age of everybody wants everything without trading anything. You know, there's a lot of people that don't want to put the work in when it comes down to discipline or uh, seeing something through to the end. And this is one of those characteristics of the ego that's always been there, but I think it's become a bit highlighted in this information age where just clicking on an app or clicking on something on your phone and you can have a meal sent to your house or <laughs> you download a song without traveling to a store, it seems like there's a bit more of the worship of instantaneous quick fixes. <laughs> but as you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. There's some work involved on your part if you wish to create a real result. We know this is true when it comes down to working out. If you went to the gym, you would know that within one workout, you would not meet all your goals and aspirations. You'd realize that perhaps it'll take weeks, months, years, depending on what your goals are, in order to attain some level of fitness or some fitness ideal that you may have. Well, as much as people who chase results are lumped into the ego category, there is some resonance with working with the ego on the spiritual path. When you're chanting mantras or doing spiritual disciplines or practicing acceptance, you are whittling away at the walls of the ego. Perhaps you've listened to some really wise gurus. They said some really profound stuff. But then when you left this guru or some spiritual ideal that you have and tried to apply these techniques in your life, you noticed, hey, wait a second. All my problems have not gone away yet. I'm still feeling the same way I did before I watched the video. So here lies the discipline aspect of the spiritual path. Continual application of spiritual exercises or truth that you know so far, what you know to be true, and continually meeting the suffering and the illusion leads to greater and greater results. As it was described to me before, it's like, water over a stone. You're chanting mantras perhaps, and you're noticing a certain pattern hasn't gone away even though you stuck to a 40-day discipline. Well, like water over a stone, you may not be aware of the rock being corroded away, but it is happening, and in time, a cascade of realization comes to you. All of a sudden, a pattern or a piece of suffering that you've been carrying your whole life seemingly just disappears. And you're like, where did that go? What happened to it? Why was I so dramatic about it? <laughs> right? But this requires discipline. This requires a constant meeting of your patterns and just the meeting of this stuff with neutrality. Or just the continual chanting of Sanskrit mantra, and there are mantras in other traditions, not just Sanskrit, that also work. Or the continual sitting with yourself. We call this meditation. Over time, if you dedicate yourself to these disciplines, results come. Not always in the way that you expect and not always in the timing that you expect. But most often people underestimate the size of the pattern or the undertaking or the magnitude of the illusion which needs to be deconstructed. So in true satsang fashion, we let go of the story, we let go even of ourselves. But sometimes you'll find that this is almost impossible for you to do. So this means 
a different pathway may be more effective in this moment. This is why I love simplicity. Chanting Sanskrit mantra is very easy. It's very simple. Meditation is very simple once you drop your expectations of what the meditation should be. And the other thing I'd like to outline is a lot of students on the spiritual path try to get away with as minimal discipline and spiritual practice as possible. If you're excited and happy about life or fulfilled in some level or free, no problem. But if you have lots of energy to complain, I say use that energy in spiritual practice. So one student I talked to said that she would sit for 15 minutes or 20 minutes a day to meditate. Why only 15 minutes? Why not an hour? Why not two hours? Why not try to become one with the meditation so much so that the passage of time is no longer relevant? A lot of people ask about Sanskrit mantra and they say, how much do I have to do? At some point you'll realize it's a lot like asking the question of how much should I love my kids? Do I, do I have to love them more than I do right now? How much do I have to love my life? Is it really, really necessary for me to like it more than I do right now? The spiritual practice is life. It is your devotion to God or to the Creator or whatever word you wish to come up with. But that which gave breath to you is what you're dedicating your spiritual practice to. And there's no limit. Many sages and gurus have come and showed the depths of their devotion. But through this devotion, pathways and flow open up within you that reveal experiences that are beyond what you can imagine. And they continue to unfold. So before you let the doubting mind convince you that I've already finished that spiritual practice thing, delve deeper. Discipline yourself. And in time, the rewards will come. I hope this helps you on your spiritual journey. Take care for now. Are you interested in working with a spiritual teacher in a formal setting? Well, perhaps the Wisdom Life School is for you. If you're interested in checking out what the Wisdom Life School is all about, just go to aratima.com. <music>